and welcome back to my channel. So as promised, I'm going to give you a quick tour around my garage. So it's full of pre-war machines, as you can see, um, cars, motorbikes, and paraphernalia. And it's not very big, so please bear with me while we're walking around. It's, uh, yeah, it's a struggle to get the cars in and out, to be honest with you, never mind walk around them. But I can still work on them, which is the main thing. So I'm going to show you some of the work I'm doing on the cars at the minute, uh, some of the work I'm waiting on because of parts, and some of the work that I am plan to do in the future, in future videos, paint work, body work, etc. Um, so yeah, so we're going to get started. First car I'm going to do is my 1933 Singer 9 Sports, which is that one. So come on, let's go and have a look. So here is my 1933 Singer. This car was actually made in November 1933 and was Singer's first attempt at a kind of two-door sports car. Now, very similar in name, the Singer Sports Car kind of company wasn't the same company as the Singer sewing machines. I get that asked every single time I go to a show and no, they're not. They actually started making cycles and push bikes in the early 1900s went into like light goods vehicles and then this was kind of like the first attempt at a sports car. Now I say attempt, they did actually enter four of these into the 24 hour Le Mans in 1933 and overall came 13th which was in those days very very good for such a small company as up against the likes of Aston Martin, Bentley, Bugatti etc. And because of this they actually, this is actually a four seater version. Now the seats are actually under this cover that I made myself to keep all the rain etc out when you're driving with an open top. So they entered four of these into Le Mans and because of that they entered the Le Mans version of this vehicle. Um, I'll show you some pictures of it now. So as you can see they chopped off the rear end, they made it into a proper two-seater sports car and kind of did the improvements to it that they needed. They strengthened the bottom end of the engine, the crank etc and did a few other improvements, such as kind of wheel strengthening and headlamps, etc. So this car, I'm gonna go a bit more in depth in, but this is actually powered by a 972cc engine. I won't show it now, because I'm very difficult to get into the engine bay one-handed. Um, twin carb, overhead cam, four cylinder. Now, it isn't the most powerful of cars, but in its day, it was quite nippy. It's very light body work, um, and it's kind of high, highly driven, so. I enjoy it, um, as you can say, it's not the fastest. I don't think I'd want to go around a race circuit in it, but I will do speed trials, etc. Now, as I go on to the bigger engine kind of stuff, I will move around to my 1934 Alvis. So I purchased this Alvis at auction. I've never bought a vehicle at auction before. I normally kind of like to go private and get to know the vehicle, etc. But at the time I just sold a World War II Jeep and I was looking for a big kind of tourer to do long distance rallies in. And this was the answer. Not only was it a bigger car than what I'm used to, but it had a larger engine. It's actually special. It started off as a 1934 Alvis Silver Eagle, uh, which it mostly retains most of its bodywork from that, but the engine and gearbox has been replaced with a, a larger 20 horsepower three litre, six cylinder, triple carbureted engine out for a Crested Eagle. So it can keep up for modern traffic, if not be a bit faster than it, but I won't be doing that. But I am looking forward to taking this for long journeys once we get the engine rebuilt. Now the actual engine had a crack in the head, which I didn't know prior to purchasing. Not too big of an issue, but it takes a long while to get these things welded and uh, still waiting. So. In the meantime, I have kind of gone over the bottom end and I'm rebuilding the pack up and I'll be documenting more of that in another video. It's got a beautiful leather barren body on it. It's got some great dark leather. Uh, it's been beautifully done. Moving on to my saloon car. Now this was my first pre-war car that I bought. Um, it's a 1939 Rover P2. It's in the late 30s. It had kind of a lot more features than the other earlier 30s cars. And what I like about this car is it's actually the 14 horsepower version. So it's a straight six, two litre engine. It goes quite well down the road. I've done quite a long mileage in this one, only in this country so far, but 
It's great to have a roof as well, especially when it's raining here in England. It's got grey suicide doors on it, which open backward. Allows you to get in a bit easier. And again, I'll get this car out, give it a 360 tour on the channel and uh, follow me on some of the events I do with it as well. I've also got a 1942 BSA WM20. This is actually in military colours. Um, it served in Africa during World War II and it was brought back over and restored. And again, great bike for long distances, big 500cc single side valve. Don't really ride it much these days, but I am going to Normandy in a couple of months, uh, doing the 80th anniversary of D-Day. So again, I'll do some content with it over there. And the second bike that I have is a recent purchase. Uh, I bought it only two days ago and it's my first pre-war bike. It's a 1938 Aerial Red Hunter, 350cc, uh, single, again, overhead valve on this one, so a bit, a bit more uh, sportier than the BSA, uh, a bit quicker, lighter as well, which is always good, because these old bikes, very heavy, and uh, again, no suspension, girder front, girder front forks, and rigid rear end. The only real suspension you've got is on your seat. But I will give a long in-depth video when I get to know the bike a bit more. And we take it out for a couple more rides, get used to it. And uh, again, probably in the nicer weather of all this nice shiny chrome and that as well. There we go, a quick pit stop tour of my garage and some of the vehicles in it. Now, as you can see, the Alvis has got a lot of work to be done to it. So keep an eye on the videos. There will be some more in-depth videos on all the vehicles, but especially that one, primarily because the parts are going to be here at the end of this week. So on my next video, I think what I'm going to do is a walk around tour of my 1933 Singer 9. Bit of an insight of what it's like having a kind of sports car with such a small engine, so we say. Um, Anyway, more information on that in the next video. You've seen a quick inside to it. Going to be out and about, take it for a quick test drive, um, show you the engine, show you some of its features, some of the modifications I've done to it. And again, keep watching and subscribe for more. Thank you.